Now, in the backyard ceremonies, it said that the ayahuasca is the medicine itself. Ergo, the facilitator really is a person who knows how to make a tea yeah. and functions like a bartender. Right. And what I would say is that that is a tremendous um, insult to the thousands and thousands and thousands and literally thousands of years of people who trained anywhere from 10 to 20 years to be proficient in what it is that they're doing. The question that my friend asked, which was great, I'm not sure if all of this needs to be taken literally, but what do you think, Hamilton, about all of these LA shamans doing backyard ceremonies with ayahuasca they ordered from Amazon? Does the plant spirit prefer that she's reaching more people and that she's more powerful and so more powerful than the shamans? And so like, it's fine. Uh, you know, her love is overpowering their lack of experience. Or is it genuinely a bad idea to pursue medicine with an inexperienced shaman? You know, how do people navigate with all this, all these choices? But I think we could need to first break that down a little bit, right? I mean, that, yeah. that's, that, there's, there's a lot packed into that. That's got, there's, yeah, there's a lot packed into that. Uh, first of all, I think um, there's, there's two kind of main governing thoughts within the ayahuasca circles. And one is that the ayahuasca is the medicine. And mm -hmm. the other is that the ayahuasca is the tool and a facilitator to the medicine. And I think that that's just a real big division line. And that's something for you to decide for yourself. Traditionally in the Amazon, the ayahuasca is not considered the medicine. So that is just a, a considered a false belief that was propagated by uh, shamans and Westerners that said that ayahuasca was la medicina. And it's a bad translation uh, about the plant itself. And then the idea of the mother of ayahuasca is also a bad translation ultimately to a very uh, gender dominated Western society that was looking for a Gaia, a Pachamama, a mother earth, a very strong supportive feminine presence that could be helpful. Um, ayahuasca is a shapeshifter in the sense that it can take on literally any shape in any form. And so if you're looking for the mother, you can find the mother. And if you're looking for the father, you can find the father. If you're looking for the grandmother, you can find the grandmother. If you're looking for the alien, you can find the alien. If you're looking for the next version of a spiral galaxy, you can find that from ayahuasca. It can take on literally any shape and form. It can take on things that look completely nanotech and uh, futuristic, and it can take on things that look like prehistoric, like uh, the time of the dinosaurs. Mm -hmm. It can take on literally any shape whatsoever. And so the idea of the shaman training and going through all the kinds of things that I went through was to learn how to wield ayahuasca so that depending on the individual needs of the people that are in the ceremony, you can help give direction and guidance to ayahuasca to take on the shape and needs for that person's individual consciousness. And the ability to do that one-on-one -on -one is one thing, and then it gets multitudes of more difficult the more people are in ceremony with you. So by the time you get to 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 people in ceremony with you, and you're one or two master shamans working on that number of people at the same time, you have to have an unbelievable skill and training and how to work with the plant spirits to understand how to wield the medicine. And the medicine is actually an expression of a kind of healing capacity found within plant life that ayahuasca becomes a gatekeeper to. Hmm. So it's not just the ayahuasca itself. It's in the different kinds of medicinal trees and medicinal plants that are all considered to have, quote unquote, what they call henios or these geniuses slash genies. It also translates poorly, but hmm. it means doctor spirit of the plant that can come to you and provide you healing through a resonance or an energetic hmm. form in the visionary state itself and that the ayahuasca helps you into that visionary state, but that that plant medicine spirit exists as an entity completely independent of ayahuasca. And that an ayahuasca shaman in the Amazon is functioning as a conduit and a bridge between you and hundreds and hundreds of different kinds of medicinal spirits that are under different kinds of hierarchies like la madre uh, or the mother ayahuasca, which then is a means to be able to uh, provide a tremendous amount of spiritual support and healing to people uh, all at the same time. So mm -hmm. for instance, you're calling on La Madre Ayahuasca to be able to govern five, six, seven kinds of trees like Remo Caspi, Capirona, Shiwawaku, Anacaspi, Chuyachaki Caspi 
through their head medicine spirits to be able to bring a couple hundred thousand of these kinds of different entities to the ceremony that are all different kinds of doctors so that you can handle the needs of 40 people that have all different backgrounds all at the same time. Hmm. That's the real practice of traditional ayahuasca shamanism in the Amazon. And so to be able to have that skill, doing it through the form of chant and ikaros, through the form of invocation and the knowledge of those spirits themselves that come from nature, that come from astral, that come from water worlds and come from the earth plane itself, are all uh, skills that you gain that are not part of the conversation and not part of the vocabulary and it's not part of the understanding or the mythology of what we see in these uh, quote unquote backyard ceremonies. Mm -hmm. Now in the backyard ceremonies, it's said that the ayahuasca is the medicine itself, ergo the facilitator really is a person who knows how to make a tea yeah. and functions like a bartender. Right. And what I would say is that that is a tremendous um, insult to the thousands and thousands and thousands and literally thousands of years of people who trained anywhere from 10 to 20 years to be proficient in what it is that they're doing. Yeah. So it's like the difference between saying, you know, a cardiologist and just giving a bunch of scalpels to another person and saying, well, you know, go do an angioplasty on that guy. Yeah, that's go exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. Like, just go for it. Like, hey, why not? Because the, you know, the medicine is in the scalpel itself, right? Uh -huh. It's, it, it, it is a complete by, this is by the Amazonian traditional shaman's attitude. It is, it is a, a just a, a complete fallacy that what's happening is that the ayahuasca is functioning as a medicine. It's rather functioning as a conduit or a means. If you understand it from that point of view, though, we can unpack the idea of the back, backyard ceremony and why people are receiving healing. They are becoming their own shamans. Hmm. The moment there isn't a shaman who's really doing shamanism for you, you are your own shaman, whether you like it or not. Mm -hmm. And the people come with such a strong belief and they come with such a strong desire for healing. And they come with such a strong intention for healing and they come with such a strong need for healing that they really do tell that to the ayahuasca and the ayahuasca is one of the kinds of medicine spirits that can provide that kind of healing right and so in the absence of an actual quality shaman you end up being the shaman for yourself and in the kinds of documentaries that i've seen on those kinds of ceremonies that is literally what i see i see that the facilitators do not know how to interject themselves into crisis moments for the people that are in crisis, they they try to support in some kind or another, but not with the same kind of skills that I saw, you know, really trained shamans in the Amazon know how to work. Just like if you were taking somebody in an ER and everybody in the ER knew what to do in that moment that you had that specific kind of head trauma or you had that heart attack or you had, you know, that seizure, the ER trained people would know exactly how to handle that situation. And mm -hmm. then they would all start working together as a team. So I see sort of a, a desire by these people who are supporting to provide that kind of support, but it is a kind of untrained support compared to what I've seen in the Amazon with really trained shamans working together to be able to handle, you know, a, an acute crisis or something that is, you know, happening that's very intense within those ceremonies. So I'm not saying that the backyard ceremony is really all bad in any kind of way, right. but I do think it is missing the point of the principal shaman. Now, if you mm -hmm. had the choice between being your own shaman and being with a bad shaman, you're better off being your own shaman. For real, 100% better off. I think you're, right. you're, the bad shaman is actually going to do something with skill that could be harmful to you. And you're not going to do that to yourself in theory, um, you know, especially if you go in with the intention of medicine and love and healing, which is what we base our ceremonies in. So medicine, love and healing. Medicine is all the energies that can make things better. Love is how you are inextricably linked to source with source in through and all around. And people can use whatever religious or non-religious context they want for source, but it's how there is a universe, just so we're not like quibbling over mm -hmm. terms. And mm -hmm. it's just how there is a universe source. So that that power, that mm -hmm. thing that made all of this possible, you know, and and so if you're really connected to that medicine and source and heart, uh, you're going to do really well in that ceremony. You're going to be able to get through it. And then ultimately in the shamanic journey sense, if you end up in a ceremony that leaves you uh, in the quote bad medicine space where now you have unfortunately not gotten what you've wanted from the ceremony and things have gotten worse for you, you now have to go on a shamanic journey to find a healer just like I did who knows how to actually handle that situation 
who can fix that for you. And that would be considered by the shamans completely normal in shamanism. It's not completely normal in the Western world. 